What's up everybody, welcome back to the build. In this episode I'll be carving the neck. I have these lines marked out evenly down the back of the neck. These are points in which I will rasp multiple facets to. So you see I have the uh, fretboard masked off and I've masked just to the bottom of the binding and that's where I'm going to bring my first facet to. So the first line marked out on the back of the neck down to the binding. Normally when I carve, I uh, use a raft from more of a 45 degree angle, but for some reason this wood likes being carved perpendicular, so that's how I've been doing it. So I just clean them up quick, and this also helps me for this next part. So I mark up roughly five millimeters on either end. And then I use a piece of masking tape to connect the two points all the way across to form a straight line. And that will be the bottom of my next facet. I like using the masking tape because once I start hitting it with the rasp, it peels back and I know not to go any further. And I keep my tongue out at all times for extra accuracy. Just kidding, I'm not going to this pants on.
So once I carve two facets on one side, I flip the neck around and I do two facets on the other side to even it up. Yoink. So there you could see I have uh, two facets carved and I just keep bringing them in closer and closer until I reach the center point and then it's almost a curve. So I'm just going to go ahead now off camera and carve the rest of the neck. You guys get the point now. And once it's carved to the center, I will put the entire neck with the random orbit sander again to get out any bumps or flat spots and to uh, make it a nice C shape, or D shape, or the car neck shape, the car neck shape. Now here I'm just feeling, see if I like it. It's a lot in the, it's a lot in the feel, and uh, this next test, you gotta do the headbang test. If it doesn't headbang nice, you just gotta throw it out and burn it, bud. It's no good. But uh, this seems to be headbanging nice. To be honest, right now it's perfect how I like it. To breach a steel door. Alright, so I had to take about a quarter inch off. Maybe even a little bit more. Because it was way too thick. Now it's how I like it. As an instrument. All right, so uh, moving on to the volute here. I've never carved a volute in my life before. To be honest, I totally anticipated just belt sanding this baby off. But uh, I'll be carving this, uh, this volute with uh, three different wraps. I purchased all these wraps at Lee Valley. It's where I get the majority of my hand tools that aren't guitar making specialty tools. Why? It's me responsible with money. So I have to take the top off of Mount Everest here with the Iwasaki file first because it was way too large. Probably going to have to bring it down a quarter inch just like I did the neck because it actually looked good with the neck the way it was before. So now I'm remarking center because I have a massive flat spot on the top and I want the peak of my volute to be dead center of my nut because that's what Ben said to do. I don't think he's ever steered any of us wrong before.
And I start at the back of the volume, and I, I work it back all the way to my new center line. I didn't know I did it this way, but I guess I do it this way now that I'm watching it. Like I said, I'm a first timer. So at first it was really hard for me to wrap my head around carving this shape into like a nice transition. But once I started carving away at it, it just started becoming clear to me. And it was awesome. Carving a volume is my favorite part of building a guitar as of right now. So this is a, a Logier Modeler's Rasp. It's actually a left-handed rasp. I don't know what makes it left-handed. It must be the way the teeth are cut. But they're hand-cut, made in France, and this is a beautiful tool. Ran me a few Canadian pesos, but I think it, every penny was worth it. You can also check out Logier's, or it's L-I-O-G-I-E-R, I believe. They have a YouTube channel of them hand cutting rasps. It's incredible, it's mind blowing that a human being actually makes tools like this by hand. Now, as you can see, it's kind of coming along, it's starting to shape up. I'm feeling pretty confident I know what I'm doing.
Oh yeah, and by the way, I uh, made my tuning key holes off camera. I didn't have the right size uh, bit for my pillar drill, so I used a Russian SKS. It's a 762 by 39 millimeter round. And I just held her point blank and blasted holes through it, which actually worked out great. It was so much more efficient. Uh, I'll probably drill uh, tuning key holes like that always now. I'm sorry I didn't have the footage of it. I just figured it wasn't that important. So, uh, it's got holes. Didn't that turn out wicked for a first timer? Like it still needs a little more work with the sandpaper and whatnot, but I am super proud of that. All right, now I'm onto the heel. So basically, I gotta connect that round to that round. And the only way I could explain it is just make it go bleh in the middle. So I gotta carve that, carve it the other way, and it just blasts in the middle. All of a sudden you have a transition. This was actually pretty easy after carving that volute. Shaping this took no time. And it worked out great. Poor guy used to be my favorite rasp. It's funny, when I started carving the neck, the other tools weren't here yet. And as soon as I finished the Iwasaki file and the uh, Lozier modeler's rasp showed up in the mail. I got to carve the neck that day. But I hog uh, the majority of the material away with the Iwasaki. The other rasp would be quicker, but this is brand new and I like it. It was Saki Files cut really nice actually. It's a, it's a really cool cut. As opposed to a rasp, that rasp, my other rasp feels like it wants to wreck material out sometimes. This one does it, just wants to skate across and take off the same amount each time. It's a pretty consistent, cool file to use. I gotta get one that uh, has a radius, but for now, I just have these two.
So I'm really happy the way this transitioned up for me. Uh, after doing that volume carve, like I said, this was pretty easy. Go back to the modeler's rasp and just clean her up. But uh, yeah, wood carving's sick. Like why you'd want a CNC to do any of this is beyond me. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, sum up this video here. Uh, sorry it was a longer one, but I wanted to show a lot of the carving. And I didn't speed it up too much because I wanted you to actually see me carving it. But uh, thanks a lot for watching again. And come on, that volume's subscribable. Like, subscribe just because of that volume. I'll make more. Thanks for watching. At least like. Have a good one.